Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Wood and Twine Fiber Studio Knitting Podcast. Um, it took me a little longer to record another episode than I anticipated and I'm sorry for being away for a while but yeah as always autumn comes really surprisingly and everything is always all over the place for me. I don't know I always try to prepare better in the summer but I'm never really prepared for autumn and the busy season so yeah I've been quite busy dyeing yarn and planning things for the upcoming months which I'm very happy to share with you today uh, at least a couple of the plans um, I can share with you today um, I'm sorry if you hear any noise in this episode um, the problem is that there is construction work over the studio um, since three weeks I think which is also one of the reasons why I really just couldn't record an episode um, so for today it should only be the moving part but I can hear they are still hammering and stuff so um, yeah I'm sorry if you hear any noise I will try to cut out as much as I can but I just really didn't want to wait longer until I can sit down and chat with you again so yeah we'll just roll with it <laughs> um, yeah, today's episode will be about what I've been working on knitting-wise and also um, I will share a couple of news on what's coming to the shop and what's happening in the next couple of months. Um, just because I always feel like I the knitting season starts and then I get all the ideas and I take on way too much and I've tried to actually organize everything very well for this uh, season. But still it's way too much to share like in a, in a written format or something so I definitely have to chat to you about this so um, yeah let's just jump right in. I will probably um, start out with all the knitting content and at the end of the episode there will be all the shop news. Um, so just in case uh, you're not interested in either of them you can just skip and I will try to remember and add timestamps at some point so you can just skip in between the more uh, fun knitting part and the info part at the end. Um, yeah, I, re I also recently re acquired a new mug or two new mugs for the studio just because I felt I didn't have um, like fancy mugs here and they are so awesome, they are really big and they are um, from a local Potter um, pottery studio that's called We Are Studio Studio I think yeah and they are just really great so uh, a heartfelt recommendation at this point. <laughs> mm. Let's start out with my um, works in progress because I think this is um, yeah the shortest part so. So my first work in progress is actually a sample for the shop in um, our BFR Massam DK yarn and it's the Ava uh, sweater that has just been released um, by the lovely Melody Hoffman of Be Mandarines and this is just a very simple minimalistic um, pullover that you can wear with basically everything. Um, I've, I'm knitting this in, as I said, the BFM Massim DK and it's the colorway um, taupe, which was kind of a one-of-a-kind colorway um, a couple of months ago and uh, yeah I really felt the murky dark colors in this and I really like it so I decided to make myself a sweater out of this and this has been an absolute joy to knit so far. I really love the neckline in this just because it really fits very well and very high up so if you like that um, definitely check the pattern out and yeah it's just very very relaxing and one of the reasons I wanted to cast on another plain stock in it project was that I was taking off for my trip to Belgium which uh, I, don't, I don't know if you saw on Instagram but I went to Belgium to meet up with my lovely friend um, Eva of the Blue Rabbit House um, and we met up in person for the first time 
after chatting for years actually and it was the most lovely time because um, we rented a little cabin in the woods um, that was pretty much just like a real cabin with a wood stove and um, like oil lamps and everything so it was really um, calming and nice and in the middle of the woods and yeah it was the nicest time we spent a lot of time knitting and also chatting about future projects maybe which I can't share about yet but we are working on something really cool and um, we also visited a really cool space that I'm going to share more about in a dedicated episode at some point. Um, but yeah, it was definitely, I definitely needed a, a very mindless knit for the trip because A, I was about to sit in a, in a train for seven plus hours and B, I knew that we are probably going to chat a lot <laughs> during the trip so I thought it's nice to have something where I really don't have to focus on any kind of texture pattern or something and um, I've actually made the version a bit more cropped just because I usually do that. Um, I'm kind of short and I usually have to shorten my knits by about 10 centimeters to make them fit me um, in the way that I like. Um, but with this one I'm not sure if I've maybe cropped it a bit too much. So I will block it and see um, after finishing the sleeves. And um, if I decide it's not long enough, because it's knit um, bottom up, so I can't really do something crazy about it. But the good thing is that um, the ribbing is added on after by picking up um, from a provisional cast on. So I could just, um, I cannot lengthen the stockinette section really. I mean, I could probably, but it wouldn't look very nice. But I can definitely lengthen the ribbing. So if I feel like I have to add a couple of centimeters, then I'm just going to put some um, more ribbing on it. And I think it doesn't matter because I think it would be nice with a little bit of longer ribbing. Yeah, and as I said, the pattern is knit bottom up and it's just a lot of stockinette stitch in the round which is nice and then you seam up the um, you seam the shoulders uh, with a three needle bind off technique which I really like because it gives kind of a um, it, it gives more strength to the shoulder seam than just a regular um, how do you say mattress stitch um, no kitchener stitch I think <laughs> sorry um, but yes, I really like the construction, I like the fit so far and let's see how it all looks when I've been uh, able to add the sleeves. So yeah, this is the Ava sweater and oh I should maybe say something about the yarn and garments because I just really realized how nicely um, this yarn knits up for garments because yeah, I mean, I've knitted garments out of this, but it has been a while and I've been mainly knitting shawls out of the our, our own shop yarn. And yeah, it's just really nice because it has, I don't know if you can see that, but it is kind of drapey, but not in the way that it will just move away or move around on your body too much. So yeah, with my gauge, I think I used four millimeter needles for this with my gauge. This is just a really nice amount of drape, I think, and I can't wait to see how the fabric looks when I blocked it. So yeah, I'm going to share more about this um, as I progress on it. Um, by the way, this is how the colorway looks in this game. I always feel like sometimes it's so difficult to imagine how something, even if it's just a solid color, to imagine something in a garment and in a larger amount, like a colorway. To imagine a colorway in a larger portion of fabric, that's what I wanted to say. So yeah, I'm very pleased with the color and I think um, since I'm a yeah, not very colorful person and I like neutrals, I think this is going to be a nice wardrobe staple. Um, so that was my Ava sweater. My next work in progress is actually a pair of socks um, which I haven't knitted in so long I just realized that I think I finished the last pair 
I don't know, in, in spring or something. But yeah, it has been a while and I usually get a knitting mojo for socks in the summer. So I'm kind of surprised that I really didn't feel it this year. But um, I've got a new yarn um, that I cannot really tell you much about yet um, because it's going to be a topic for later in the year or maybe even the beginning of next year, I don't know yet. But I really wanted, with every new yarn I get, I'm trying to test it thoroughly as much as I can, just so I can make sure I can recommend things well. And so I put this new yarn that I'm going to share more about soon to a test. And I've tied up um, a skein for myself to test in the colorway Mulberry. I really like how variegated it is at some points. Um, and I've started knitting the the Crow socks by Lerke of Fibre Tales. I was really inspired by the um, original colorway that she used in the um, I think it's Romney Pure Sock by Annabelle Williams, and I really love the dark moody um, purple reddish tone. So I thought why not use my mulberry colorway which I knew dyes up kind of similarly on my on white ba yarn bases. So yeah these are my gold socks and they are very enjoyable to knit. I've just come across the um, the little textured section and from now it's just pretty plain stock in it which I really like. I like socks to be busy at the cuff and then it's just like the heel and stuff is work enough, so I think it would be. It's always good when there's just um, the foot portion is just a stock in it um, stitch. So, am I getting really bright here? Let me check if I can change this a little lower. Oh, maybe not that low. Wait, okay. Um, so, yeah, these are my cold socks. And by the way, this little stitch marker here. It's by Emma's, Emma's Knits, I think is her handle on Instagram. And she has an Etsy shop with really pretty um, stitch markers. And I think she also sells mask and um, glass, key ch um, yeah, for glasses, uh, keychains. Keychains? No. How do you say? Like chains where you can just like have your mask or your glasses hanging around your neck. So necklaces? I don't know. But um, yeah, they are really adorable. I think they are all made of natural um, like stones and stuff. And yeah, I really like those whenever I only need like one big one for the beginning of a round or so. And yeah, here you can also see the little leafy pattern a bit more. I really like it in this colorway and I also really love it in this yarn. So, so far I haven't knit much with it and I will also have to give the socks a good wear test before I finally rate the yarn. But so far I'm really pleased and I cannot wait to share more about this. Um, yeah, this is, these are my grow socks and cannot wait to continue on them. Oh, by the way, I usually use the 9 inch circular needles by Xiaogu, um, which I find very pleasing to knit with. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, um, but I think they're just making knitting socks so easy because you can just go roll round over round and round and it's just really nice to knit with those. So um, these are my cool socks and now I'm going to stop rambling about them. <laughs> my next and last work in progress is um, housed in this very beautiful project bag that I have to share with you because I'm pretty sure some of you will like them. Um, I've been introduced to the project bags um, by Payauta, Payauta Makes on Instagram. Um, she's We used to chat or we started chatting every now and then and ever since I saw the light linen bags she made I was immediately in love and I could never um, decide for what pattern I wanted to go for and uh, yeah at some point I decided I needed one of the very classic ones and 
she was so kind, uh, her name is Milda by the way, and she was so kind um, to let me buy one of those um, because I couldn't really make it in time for the shop update. Or I don't know if I couldn't make it, but there was some issue and she was so kind to let me purchase one before. So as I say in every video, I don't have any like sponsored ads or something in my videos. When, whenever I share a project like this or a product like this, I bought this with my own money and it's I don't promote anyone because someone gave something to me. It's just um, I just want to share <laughs> my love for this project bag with you because it's just so nice. It's very spacious. I mean, you can see um, if you compare it to my head size, it's kind of spacious and it definitely has enough space for your sweater projects. Um, I mean, if they are getting really big, it is a bit like you have to squish them down a bit, but for the most part, it's more than enough space for um, in this bag and I just really love them. and. Yeah, Milda hand stitches those um, little, like she embroiders those, those little botanical things on um, some local to her linen fabric and she also sews them up and um, as a sewer myself I have to say the quality is really nice and it's very sturdy and the fabric is very nice and yeah, it's just a beautiful piece of handcrafted <laughs> goods. So. Yeah, the next work in progress is actually kind of a yeah different one because it all started out with a swatch that I did in a yarn combination that I've been wanting to try for ages. Um, and I swatched for a really pretty pattern that uh, Eva of the Blue Rabbit House um, introduced me to and that's the Agat Cigar um, cardigan. And that one is just... I really love the pattern and I wanted to knit it in um, our own yarn with a strand of ethically produced mohair but something in the pattern with the yarn combination just didn't work out and I kind of felt like I needed something with a texture but a very minimalist texture for this yarn combo and then actually my mom suggested to try um, half brioche which I did for the first time. Oh, you can see the strand is over here. Um, so, yeah, this is the combination of my BFM Massam 4 ply um, yarn with a strand of Knitting for Olives uh, soft silk mohair. I decided to give it a go and it's the nicest fabric. This, I don't know if you can see, oh, it doesn't focus on the halo, but yeah, it's just really fluffy and the halo is so nice. So um, then I started, when I found this um, yarn combination, I started looking for um, patterns uh, that might feature a half knit brioche. Is it half brioche or half knit brioche? I think in German you would translate it to half brioche. Whatever, I'm gonna call it half brioche now. Um, and I've been looking for patterns that are just like my style, so kind of minimalistic and um, yeah, just very easy, but I couldn't find one, so what are you gonna do? Make it hard for yourself and make up something, <laughs> which I actually ended up doing. So um, I was trying to make up a very simple oversized sweater and I cast it on and after a couple of yeah errors I ran into at the beginning, I think it's turning out okay now, so that's what I'm gonna show you now. <laughs> So, um, the colorways I'm using for this project are um, my BFM Massim Fort Ply in the colorway Almond, which I think I have a couple of skeins in the shop right now still, if I'm not mistaken. Um, not many, but a few. And um, I'm, compa I'm pairing it with this mohair, and it's the colorway nut brown and they I wanted something that will like with a bit more of a neutral touch and not too reddish that just because I don't look very good in red <laughs> colors or reddish undertones 
So yeah, I was trying to neutralize the slight red undertone in the almond with an even more neutral brown in the mohair. And I think they go very well together. So now I'm going to show you my very messy project. Um, I'm sorry it looks a bit weird because I was I had to try out some things with the neckline and stuff. Um, but this is the little sweater I'm knitting right now. Um, as I said, it's in half brioche all over. And uh, I was, yeah, it's just a very simple one with a simple neckline, with a double folded neckline and some seaming at the shoulders. Oops, it's focusing on my face. And yeah, I think, I don't know if you can see, but I think it will turn out very nice so far. So it will have kind of a dropped shoulder. That's what I anticipated with this. So I made the shoulder portion quite wide. Um, just so it can be like a very slouchy and cozy pullover. Because with half knit brioche or half brioche and brioche uh, stitches, it's always kind of a voluminous fabric and you have to make sure that it's not too tight I think because it will look kind of puffy and I wanted it to be more of an oversized sweater as well. Um, yeah so this is how far I've come so so far and it's very crazy because I showed you the little skein of the BFR Massim fall ply and this is a fingering weight yarn so it goes a long way but this is still my first skein and I don't know if if you've ever knit brioche or half brioche before, it takes up quite a bit of yarn, especially like full brioche, but half brioche takes up quite a bit of yarn as well. And I'm really surprised because I'm, I've come so far with this and um, yeah, I think I will be able to almost get um, to the point where I will um, join into the round for this, like below the sleeves with just over one skein and yeah, it's actually kind of good because I think I can get away with like three or four skeins of this yarn um, for a whole sweater, which is quite nice. Yeah, so as said, um, my BFM Massim 4 ply is a fingering weight, so 400 meters per 100 grams. And the mohair, I believe, is 230 or something for a 25 gram ball. So. This is my second ball of the mohair and I will definitely keep track on how much I've been using. But I can see like with the yarn combination and the gauge I got on my 4mm needles, this is going really far. Like it's almost top of the sweater and it's not a, it's not a very uh, small size because I'm, I think I've anticipated on like a size 4 or so if you would translate it into traditional knitting patterns. but. With quite a bit of ease um, so it's not a very small size and I still got very far with the yarn so yeah this is my little <laughs> not yeah I don't want to call it a design attempt but <laughs> um, yeah as I said sometimes it happens that you're just really inspired by a yarn combination and a stitch pattern and then you just cannot find the right pattern for it so yeah I'm definitely not going to be a big knitwear designer in the future probably but yeah i've just tried and i will see how it turns out and i will definitely keep you updated on um, how this is going so i'm trying to get a little bit quicker here because i can already see this episode being super long so um on to my fo's um one of them i'm almost embarrassed to share only now because I began knitting on this one, I think, in 2019 or something. So yeah, it has been in the works for quite a while. And uh, it's not because I was uh, there was an issue with it. I was just too lazy to add a button band. <laughs> so this cardigan has been lying around for almost one and a half years until it got a button band finally. <laughs> but I kind of felt like the urge to finish it before casting on a new project to go on my trip uh, to Belgium. So yeah, I ended up finally finishing this. And this is, I don't know if I can show it in the camera because it's so huge, but this is my uh, Willa cardigan. 
by Sari Nordlund and it's one of the most beautiful cable patterns I think there is. I knitted this in the largest size just because I wanted it to be super oversized and very uh, like one of those cardigans that you can just throw over and um, yeah it has been absolute joy to knit. I still remember that I was really it was so addictive to knit this pattern because the cabling and everything if you're into this it's a lot of fun and it's very addictive and yeah at the end I even added a button band now which was the only thing that was left and um, I don't know if you can see but I also added those really adorable wooden buttons and I think I shared them already in my first episode of the podcast um, they are handmade by the mum of a friend of mine um, who makes those out of uh, fallen branches from her garden and she yeah she just makes them herself and I find it so cool and I added those to, for some reason the recording just stopped but I added those wooden buttons to the cardigan and I also wanted to show you kind of the back of the cardi because it's just it's just really pretty and I did some modifications to it um, I usually with the like the this cable here it usually f uh, features a bubble um, in the middle and I kind of felt this would be a bit too much for me and my minimalist liking so I ended up omitting those and I also made a little bit of a change like it would be on the sleeves as well on this cable and I omitted the bubbles as well plus I did not make such a long cuff as it was anticipated in the pattern I made it a bit shorter and uh, yeah just added a couple of centimeters to the regular sleeve just so it would work out and yeah I'm very pleased with how this turned out um, so let's talk about the yarn I used for this. This is actually knit in my Rustic Merino um, yarn in the worsted, uh, Rustic Merino worsted, um, in the colorway Fossil. That's basically like a, an off-white, super light gray that I find is so nice and cool and undertone. I just really love it. And I'm getting a bit dark here, am I? Can we go? Yeah. Um, and it's just a perfect match for the pattern. I think I've been wanting to make a neutral cable sweater for so long. And um, yeah, when I started the shop in 2019, <laughs> I actually knitted this out of the yarn just so I know how it would behave and stuff. And it's really enjoyable. The ca cables really bloom in this yarn and it's just perfect. It's very woolly and it's very warm, especially being a worsted weight and woolen spun. Um, and I have taken it out of the shop in the summer season just because I think it would be kind of crazy to knit something like this in um, the warm temperatures, but um, it's coming back, um, which is also why I'm very happy I can finally show this FO to you because yeah, I'm going to talk more about this in the shop info part, but it is coming back to the shop, the Rustic Merino, in the undyed state in four different natural colorways that are all just really nice. And yeah, if you fancy knitting yourself a very warm wintry sweater like the Willa, um, yeah, I can only recommend getting a few skeins. Um, I will also try and insert some wear pictures because it's very hard to show this big <laughs> project um, on camera but I'll try to insert some clips um, if I manage just so you can see it better. Yeah, that's my Willow cardigan. Um, lots of cables, lots of fun to knit. The pattern is by Sari Nordlund and uh, yeah, can only recommend if you're into cables of course. <laughs> On to my last finished object for this episode and uh, this is a very special one for me and I don't know if you saw on Instagram um, the last couple of days but I've shared that I just received a new limited edition yarn in the post a couple of weeks ago 
and I'm so happy with it and I had to cast on immediately just so I can show you how it looks like. I remember the last time I had my limited edition number two. Um, there were a couple of people being like, oh, how does it knit up? And um, yeah, so I decided to wait with the launch of the yarn until I can actually finish um, a garment and show you uh, the yarn. And actually, it's the one I'm wearing. Um, it's the visiting cardigan from Liner Magazine issue 12, I believe. Um, or 11, I'm not sure. Maybe it's 11. Oops, can you focus? Um, and it's as well, it adds as well, fe features the little wooden buttons that I just showed you on my Willa as well. They are a different size this time, and yeah, I just love them on woolen items. And yeah, this is the visiting cardigan by. Uh, Stella Ackroyd from the Liner Magazine issue 11. It's um, all over broken rib. I will also try and insert some um, wear pictures where I'm standing up just because I want to show you the fit. It's kind of cropped again. I cropped it quite a bit um, but I'm not tall enough to show it into camera so <laughs> I'll have to change the settings a bit but uh, yeah it's kind of a cropped um, cardigan and uh, a very nice um, just a very nice minimalistic fit. I'm always rolling up the sleeves so I'm sorry I can't really show you the cuffs but they are just um, regular ripped cuffs and uh, yeah I'm just always rolling them up because I cannot handle <laughs> full length sleeves for some reason I don't know why um, but yeah this is how the pattern looks like on the sleeves and it's just it was a breeze to knit it was really quick um, just a simple very simple construction but also very neatly designed in a way that you seam the cardigan at some points um, and I just love it when a designer makes the effort to design the pattern in a way that if you seam it up it looks nice in the end because I don't know if you can see but it seemed below the armhole and along the sides and the pattern just continues and there is not like a big visible seam um, and that's something I just really love so Stella you did a good job <laughs> no but it's um it's just yeah designed in a way that it looks very neat when you knit it and when you uh, wear it and that's just something I love. But let's not ramble too much about it. Um, let's chat about the yarn because the yarn is my next limited edition number three. And this is a true uh, DK weight yarn, woolen spun from 100% um, local Jacob's wool. Um, the Jacob sheep is naturally spotted, so it's white and black. And whenever you like make a yarn out of it and blend all the colors together, it gives this super beautiful dark gray sheen, not sheen, color with a bit of a brownish sheen. But it's not like it's not as slate gray as a, for example a Gotland, but it's still very true gray and not really brownish. It just has a warm touch to it, I think. And I absolutely adore the natural color of this yarn. Um, so I had to make a cardigan for myself out of it. And I'm absolutely loving it. It's really nice over dresses and stuff. So um, yeah, this is limited edition number three um, in 100% Jacobs. It's 250 meters per 100 grams. Although I must say, like a true DK weight, but I must say that you can definitely get away with knitting it on a worsted weight gauge because it's very woolly, it will bloom a lot and um, it will definitely fill out any gaps if you knit it on a bit more of a looser gauge. So I've knitted my visiting cardigan on a 4.5 millimeter needle, so um, and the fabric is absolutely perfect, I think. It's um, just the right amount of drape, I think. Not too much, not too little. 
And so, yeah, that's definitely something that can be knitted out of this yarn. Um, I'm very proud of it, um, especially because the wool comes from a special place that I've, I think I've talked about before because um, a couple of months ago I teamed up with uh, Tierpark Archevada, um, which is like an um, institution where they keep domestic sheep and animal breeds in general um, and many of them are close to extinction because, I don't know, some don't meet the industrial standards anymore and so um, but they keep rebreeding those breeds and uh, contributing to stopping the extin extinction of those breeds eventually and I find this whole project so fascinating and um, a couple of months ago I did a collaboration with them kind of and I produced some spinning fiber from their Jacob sheep wool and um, I sold it and gave some of the proceeds to them because they've been losing so much of their um, like finances funded through um, visitors who were not allowed to come due to COVID and they lost quite a bit of their um, funds due to that and so I decided to make like a little bit of a charity project for them. It was a pleasure to work with them. And um, yeah, the whole project in general is just very fascinating and um, yeah, very support worthy, I think. So I teamed up with them again and got the yeah, Jacob sheep wool again to make a yarn out of it this time. Um, but yeah, they only have a few of the sheep, so it's not a lot of this yarn that will be available that I have to say. I think it's below 100 skeins, so... Yeah, if you really fancy getting it, then maybe don't wait too long. Um, I will share more info on when this is going to be available and stuff about the in the info part of the podcast. But yeah, it's just a really lovely yarn. And I just wanted to share with you that I actually made the effort this time to knit something out of it so you can see how it knits up. Um, one thing I have to say is, um, if you are not familiar with 100% uh, Jacob sheep wool, this is not a merino and, and this is not a sheep breed that has been bred for its wool specifically. So, um, as far as I know, it's a very old breed and it has been around for many, many, many years. Um, but it's not a wool sheep necessarily and um, Therefore, the wool is not super fine and it's not very like soft, but it's it is soft in a way and it's very lofty, but it's definitely a rustic wool. So if you're like unsure about how much you can handle um, and if you're very sensitive um, to rustic wools, I don't know if this is for you. I want to be honest about these kind of things because um, I know it's difficult if you have to, if you can only order online and you don't know how the wool feels and stuff. But um, yeah, I can tell. I'm very, um, like, I, I'm not very sensitive. I can have this around my skin and uh, also on my neck, where most people are very sensitive and I don't mind. But I know it can be different for other people. So um, just so you know, it's a very rustic yarn and if you consider ordering it, um, maybe ask yourself if you really can handle it because I know the color is very stunning and some of you might just also want to get it because of the color. But yeah, I just want to be very transparent about this that it is a rustic yarn. It's not scratchy, but it is rustic. And um, like for example, if you're, it's not as hard, I think, as let lopi. Um, which I feel like is one of the most widely available, very rustic yarns. I don't think it's as um, as rustic, but it still has a, quite a bit of rustic feel to it. So just so you know, if you're not sure about it, feel free to always message me. And if you need any more information on it, and I will gladly share um, my thoughts. Um, but yeah, just uh, know that it's rustic. I also don't focus on softness whenever I produce my yarns, so it's more, I don't want to have a wide variety of animals and breeds and 
make exciting new yarns and also keep it as local as possible. So um, yeah, that is not why I'm not focusing on necessarily on softness. Although I will have probably a very soft yarn at some point, but I'm gonna share more about this um, as well. Um, yeah. But if you're a lover of rustic yarns, as I am, um, definitely recommend, I definitely recommend getting it. And yeah, also with washing and putting it into, like blocking it, it definitely gets quite a bit softer than it is in this game that I can say, because I, yeah, if I touch the card again in comparison now, it's definitely more soft. And yeah, um, I hope I didn't point out the rusticness too much now. It's just a very gorgeous yarn and I absolutely love the color. It's a bit lighter in real life. We just have a very gloomy day here today, so it's a bit difficult to show, but I will also um, post a lot of pictures and stuff in the next couple of days, just so you can see the color a bit more like in different lightings. Um, yeah, so that's my last AFO um, and I think I can just move on to the shop news section while already talking about the new limited edition yarn because um, of course some of you will ask when it will be available and it will be available in the next shop update that will take place on the 15th of October, Friday on 8 p.m. GMT plus two. So that's the Berlin time zone. Um, I'm going to add timestamps to my, not timestamps, um, a reminder to my Instagram stories and we'll refresh this every couple of days just so you can um, set up a reminder if you're not sure with time zones and stuff. But yeah, 15th of October, 8 p.m. GMT plus two. And there will be this yarn available. Um, I would recommend, because I had a, in the last couple of, couple of shop updates, I had a few colorways that just sold out very quickly and some people were a bit disappointed um, because they came like half an hour late to the update and like I, I don't want to predict anything wrong but I can imagine that because I only have such few skeins of this that it might be gone quite quickly so um, if you want to get some of the Jacobs limited edition yarn, then um, maybe consider um, being on time for the update, just so nobody gets is too disappointed. Maybe. Also, um, if you want me to show you a comparison um, with my limited edition number two that I used to make a couple of months ago together with uh, Licke Sheep Farm, um, let me know, I will send you a picture, because if you own uh, this, the limited edition 2 already, this actually has kind of a different tone. It's a bit lighter than that one, and it definitely does not look the same. So if you maybe purchase that one uh, in the spring, I can, um, and you're interested if there is a difference, then just let me know, send me a DM or an email, and I can send you a comparison picture. I don't have it here right now, so I cannot show you, and unfortunately, but... I will. Um, so yeah, it will be available in the next shop update alongside um, other basics, like not basics, but uh, some staple colorways on the B of a Massam DK that I will be bringing back. Um, I will also bring back the uh, B of a Massam 4 ply and some sock yarn. And I'm going to try and record another preview episode um, if I find time and if it's silent enough. <laughs> Um, I will try and make like a preview uh, like last time with all the colorways that will be available. Um, and one thing that I will that I was already mentioned that will be back is the rustic merino um, yarn in the worsted weight. And uh, that one is the one I knitted my Willa cardigan in. And it's a 225 meter per hundred grams woolen spun yarn that is fully produced in Germany and um, very traceably uh, produced and I will bring it back in four natural colorways uh, ranging from a deep charcoal over a brown, a beigey oatmeal color uh, to the fossil colorway that I just showed you. That, that's the lightest one. And um, with the rustic merino it used to retail for 15 
euros per 100 grams in the undyed colorways, which uh, I won't be able to offer anymore at that price point. There have been some changes in the last year to some of my production things and some prices just changed for some of my yarns and so I decided to lift up the prices for the undyed rustic merino a little bit. I just like to be transparent about these kind of things because I think if you purchase it in the past you will be like oh why is this more expensive now but it's just because I have to kind of find ways to make this my living and um, yeah some of the Prices of products in my production process are just a little bit higher now. I don't know. There are various reasons to it, not only COVID, but just different things. And yeah, so I decided to raise the price, raise the prices a little bit for this one. And uh, yeah, I hope it's still uh, affordable or accessible for as many people as possible. Um, but yeah, that's going to be available as well on the 15th of October. Um, yeah, so far so good. We will also have um, another very special project in the next shop update. Um, I won't be making advent calendars. I have been asked this so many times, but you know, I cannot get my yarn in mini skeins either not in cone form or anything so I would have to wind off existing skeins I have to wind into minis by hand and as much as I would love to do that for you and I just don't have the time to do so so um, there won't be advents but I've been making my mind up about what I can offer um, as an alternative to advent calendars and that will be um, like a little uh, winter box. Um, I don't want to call it Christmas box because not everyone in the world is celebrating Christmas. Um, but it will be inspired by the festive season at the end of the year. So I will call it something like winter box, festive winter box or something like that. But it will be very festive and um, there will be a box and there will be four skeins of sock yarn individually wrapped for you to open on each weekend of December. You can do Sunday or Saturday or whatever you like. Um, but just a little gift uh, to, re to open um, every weekend uh, leading up towards the festive season. Um, yeah, the colorways, there will be two solid and two variegated colorways and I won't share them before. I know some of you on Instagram, I did a little poll and some of you were like, oh, please share them before. But I just think it will ruin the surprise of unpacking the yarn. Um, so yeah, they, they, they won't be shown before, so it will be kind of a mystery box. But um, I will keep them festive, but not into two traditional colors, because I don't feel it's very sustainable to make colorways that can only be worn around the festive season. I don't find that very sustainable in a way <laughs> that I like it. Uh, so the colorways will be a bit more um, like non-season related. They will be festive but not necessarily a red and a green <laughs> and so yeah there will be four skeins as said individually wrapped and there will also be um, some goodies that I make myself. I will add um, as far as I know so far. I'm still waiting on some supplies but I'm, I hope I will be able to add um, some stitch markers that I will make myself and also some uh, natural beeswax candles that I will add um, just so you can have a little cozy uh, feel while unpacking the yarn maybe. And uh, the other goodie that will be added to the boxes is actually an art print um, that will be designed by the ever so lovely Claire of Will and Nature. She is um, also the creative head behind my um, thank you cards that you can find in every order that I pack. And um, we are also working on other creative projects, but she's just an awesome illustrator and her art is just wonderful. And we teamed up to make an exclusive um, print for this box. So you will also receive a little festive, cozy 
Not too festive though, because we wanted to you, be, you to be able to hang it up your wall all year round. But uh, yeah, you will have a little cozy, nice art print in those boxes as well. So yeah, it will be on some festive goodies and it will all be packed in a very nice way, I think. I've already gathered up all of the packaging material. It will of course all be still plastic free and I won't use a lot of materials that can just be thrown away. I like to make everything as reusable as possible. And uh, yeah, so you will have a little treat of a sustainable uh, festive box if you want to. So um, pre-orders for those boxes will be going up in the shop update on the 15th as well. So you can um, purchase the box and it will ship I'm aiming for the first week of November, just so people overseas have the chance to have it all in time um, for the festive season. Um, so yeah, it will ship. I will also announce the shipping date finally um, once it, they are all done, but I, I'm aiming for end of October, beginning of November. And um, some of you might ask if you can combine shipping with your order. From the, from the update. You can. I will put the box into another box then and ship it to you. So um, you can order yarn on top of the box and um, if you want it all to be shipped together just uh, write me a little line um, in my in email with your order number and let me know that you would like um, the box to be shipped with, or the yarn to be shipped with your box. Just note that then you will have to wait longer for the yarn because it will only ship um, beginning of November then. So um, yeah, but I want to make it possible to combine shipping just because I know it can be quite a splurge um, if you order from overseas. So I'm pretty sure I forgot anything, something to say about the whole box thingy, but uh, I will also make sure to write a newsletter about this again. Um, when we are a little bit closer to the update. So maybe if you subscribe to our newsletter, you will get all the info in written form again um, about the boxes and what will be available and also about the limited edition yarn. Oh, now the light is a bit better so I can show you. Yes, you can see it's a bit lighter in this light. Um, yeah, so make sure to subscribe to our newsletter just so I can get you informed about everything again because yeah there's going to be a lot in the next update um, but yeah that was it so far um, I'm very sure that I forgot to say something about the boxes um, oh yeah maybe I should mention the yarn base <laughs> it's the Corydale sock yarn base so it's a non superwash and nylon free um, sock yarn that I have in the shop regularly and it will it's a 400 meter per 100 gram um, uh, skein so each skein is 400 meters and uh, you can get at least one pair of socks out of each skein so um, yeah and if you have any questions on the boxes or on any of the yarn or the limited edition yarn feel free to always DM me on Instagram or just write me an email. Um, I will also link all the info um, on how to reach me below. And uh, yeah. Thank you for listening to my rambles. It was a lot of talking today, I have a feeling. <laughs> and um, yeah, I hope you're having a nice beginning of fall and that you have a cozy uh, time. And that, yeah, if fall is around the corner for you as well and you're part of your world. And I hope you enjoyed the episode and yeah, let's be... Of course, the video had to stop while I was saying goodbye. So it definitely is time for, to say goodbye for this episode. So yeah, thanks for listening to my rambles. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and I hope you're having a cozy weekend and a lot of knitting time maybe. So yeah, speak soon. Bye.